Today on Missing Number, Halo's Ghost of Lockout, Mysterious Skulls and Hellpai, and the reason why kids were terrified of going into the water on Banjo-Kazooie. Missing Number starts now. Sometimes you think you're alone when in reality you're not. On July 28th, 2006, a YouTube user named Afrosauce uploaded Halo 2 multiplayer footage that was taken by a player named Antinoob. Antinoob and his friend The Underdog were hanging out together in a custom Xbox Live multiplayer match on a map called Lockout. Eventually, Underdog went AFK to go eat, and so Antinoob decided to jump around the map while he waited. At one point in the video, Antinoob can be seen looking around as he stands next to Underdog in a corner of a room. Nothing is out of the ordinary, but when Antinoob turns around and looks back at Underdog, he sees this to his utter surprise. A plasma grenade stuck to Underdog. It appears out of nowhere, but slowing down the footage reveals a mysterious figure throwing a grenade. Anti-Noob was not alone. A third unwanted Spartan player was now in the match, and it exhibited odd behavior and traits. The strange whitish figure had no walking animation and just slid around the map. He also didn't have a gamer tag, nor did he appear on the scoreboard. Most troubling of all though, he killed everyone in sight. His weapon of choice were grenades, but he had the ability to throw them behind his back. What's more, he acted like a skilled player as he jumped around, seemingly knowing the map shortcuts. Near the end of the video, as the murderous stranger is chasing Antinoob, Antinoob decides to hide behind a fusion coil in the corner of a room. But when Antinoob peeks out to see if it's clear, the stranger is seen standing right in front of him. It's like a scene out of a horror movie. The spooky Spartan has been dubbed the Ghost of Lockout, and ever since this footage came out, multiple Halo players have encountered the ghost themselves. Ghosts have a wide variety of characteristics. They can be invisible, invincible, and appear to have unlimited ammo. Their aiming is very good, and their guns can damage you, even if there's no visible must flash or bullets. When a ghost kills you, oftentimes the game won't say who killed you, and when it does, it'll attribute the kill to the Guardians, a name reserved for when the game doesn't know who or what actually killed you. Ghosts can appear in any color, and can move erratically. Additionally, they may only reveal themselves to one player in a match, but not to everyone else. Some ghost sightings are real, while others are fake or a mod. Mods can replicate the effects of a ghost, but back then, it was impossible to mod Halo 2 maps on Xbox Live. In addition to Halo 2, ghosts have also appeared in other games, like Halo 3 and Halo Reach. One theory about the ghost was that it was actually Bungie trolling players. Meanwhile, others believe the ghosts were leftover unfinished bots that Bungie was testing for multiplayer. Some players even claim to have seen the ghosts in private, local, and offline matches, which is questionable. The widely accepted answer for the presence of the ghosts is that they were caused by severe network lag. When a player joined a match during extreme lag, pockets of player data may not have been obtained properly, and so the game tried to function with incomplete information. As a result, the player either got disconnected, or would actually remain in a match as a ghost. What's more, ghost players didn't even know there were ghosts. On their end, they moved and used weapons normally. In the farthest reaches of Hellpie's world lies a secret. Hellpie is a 3D platformer that came out in July 2022. It's made by an indie dev called Sluggerfly, and in this gameplay footage by Easter Egg Archive, something can be found in the game's Flavor Peaks level. After acquiring almost all of the game's upgrades, players can jump off of a platform and swing their way to the backside of a mountain where they'll find this. A giant creepy skull. It has black scribbles on its face, and its eyes and mouth are dark and hollow. Additionally, the forehead has the number 148 on it, but it's displayed backwards for some mysterious reason. Another skull can be found in the Pearly Gates level, which has the number 32 on its forehead.
and in Sashimi Bay, a third skull can be found submerged underwater. This one has the number 831. No one knows the purpose of these skulls. Some guess that the numbers could be a code, GPS coordinates, or a phone number. One Steam user named Senenmut said that after pressing the tilde key, they tried inputting the numbers in a text box that appeared on the main menu, but nothing happened. Deepening the mystery even more is that according to a Steam user named Mordecrane, you can swing to the top of the Hell Prince's chambers in Sin Inc. to find this. Another skull, this time on a pentagram. This skull is also tinier and can actually talk. Its name is Goor, and it just says 3, which would be the total number of skulls that players think are in the game. One online user theorized that the numbers unlock an 8th door that's in the same room as Goor. Meanwhile, others believe that the skulls are connected to a Ben and Ed alternate reality game. In 2015, Sluggerfly released a 3D platformer called Ben and Ed, which had you playing as a zombie named Ed, who had to clear obstacle courses to save his human friend Ben. The game featured a dismemberment mechanic, and shortly after the game's release, players found an easter egg in the game that directed players to visit a Facebook page that contained creepy and ominous photos and videos. Several photos had creepy black doodles drawn on them, while one video showed a severed foot and someone cutting off their own arm. Additionally, a new mode for the game was released that contained this ending. The face of a black-eyed child can be seen, in addition to GPS coordinates that lead to this sewer drain in Germany. An online user visited the location where he found things like a bone and more creepy drawings. Additionally, this city is where the Rottenburg cannibal was born. Considering the ARG's fascination with body parts, it's possible that the skulls in Helpai are connected with the Benen and ARG. The black scribbles are even identical to the ones seen on the skulls' faces. What's more, Hellpie's trailer contains a single frame that's full of text that reads, quote, By wishlist, Hellpie is in your head now. Additionally, it also teases, quote, Stop researching, we have nothing to do with Ben. When I was younger, I was terrified of going into the water, and Banjo Kazooie didn't help alleviate that fear. The N64 platformer is a cartoony, lead-harder game, but beneath the surface of one of its levels lies something dreadful. Treasure Trove Cove is a tropical island stage that's surrounded by water. Naturally, your first instinct is to dive right in and explore what's out there, especially since there's Jinjo creatures and collectible items in and above the water. However, the second you step foot into the water, you're greeted with this. A killer shark. This terrifying beast is Snacker the Shark, and he spawns right near you anytime you jump into the water. He's reminiscent of Jaws, and even the music sounds like Jaws when he's chasing you while commenting about eating you. Trying to outswim Snacker without jumping out of the water is futile since he's slightly faster than you. Should you be too slow to make it out of the water in time, you'll become dinner. What makes Snacker deceptively sinister is that you can't see him in the water unless you go into the water, at which point you're already in danger. Snacker even appears in other stages, like Rusty Bucket Bay. If you swim into a fenced-in area that contains a stranded yellow Jinjo, Snacker will appear even in the polluted water that damages you over time. <laughs> Snacker may be a formidable foe, but he's not indestructible. To my astonishment, I've learned for the first time after 20 years that Snacker can actually be killed. <sighs> You can kill him by shooting eggs at him, or using the special Wonder Wing ability. I personally had no idea back then, and it turns out that many others didn't know as well. 
The reason for this is probably because you can't really attack while you're in the water. As such, this makes you vulnerable, and so you assume that Snacker can't be killed. If you do kill Snacker, however, he'll drop 3 health restoring honeycombs, and the waters will be shark free at last. However, Snacker's reign of terror will only be gone for around a minute, after which, Snacker will respawn. I always assumed that the reason why Snacker was in the game was to cleverly prevent players from going out of bounds, but it turns out that there was another reason. In a now deleted page on Rare's official website that detailed the various sharks that have been in Rare's games, Snacker's creator Greg Mails reveals why he actually added the scary shark in Banjo Kazooie. Mails said, quote, I wanted a threat that made you think twice about going in the sea around Treasure Trove Cove. The obvious choice was a shark, as they instill a natural fear in humans, and I love the movie Jaws. There was a problem though. The sea was large, and we couldn't put enough sharks in it to ensure the player was always near one. So we hit upon a somewhat cheeky solution that actually made Snacker far better than his original design. He'd only appear once you went in the water. This meant that one shark would patrol the whole sea, but it actually made him a lot more menacing, as you couldn't see him, but he'd always be there. The daft name and his little comments try to offset the danger with a bit of fun. Not sure I quite succeeded with that. 